But I'm going to be honest with you. This episode did not go as planned. We didn't fix the situation. So if you're looking for a how-to, this is not the right video. If you want to see me struggle with a bunch of things, please look forward to the next couple minutes. What's going on YouTube? Andrew here from Thousand Dollar Car Guy giving you another episode of the Toyota Echo. A few things have happened since we last talked. That intermittent fire on cylinders three and four is definitely back, but it's still intermittent, except this time it's completely shutting off that cylinder. So it's just going brrrr instead of a nice smooth pa 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 I bet that sounds weird on camera. Anyway, the next time it can do that while we're on camera, I'm going to try disconnecting the cylinders three and four coil packs to see if they are actually bad. It's a very free way to find out if those cylinders aren't firing. If you pull it out and it doesn't change anything, then it's definitely bad. But anyway, today's episode is going to be about what happened on my way home from work today. This thing has always had kind of like an elasticity to it. When making a left-hand turn, it was always like, imagine having a rubber band on it so it kind of get tighter and then spring back, if you will. So ding, 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 ding. So I was making a left-hand turn like I always do. And then all of a sudden this happened. My airbag light went off. Uh, I felt a very firm pop in the steering wheel. So I'm guessing that behind here and underneath the shroud somewhere, we're going to find a disconnected wire that was actually for the airbag. So. We're gonna be safe about this. We're gonna pop the hood, disconnect the battery, and then start ripping into this to try and find out where that wire is that came undone. So I am not the biggest fan of airbags, but you might be able to see it here. You see that kind of scar looking thing right there? When I was a younger driver, the airbags deployed in a low speed collision and ended up burning the skin off from my wrist to my elbow, and that's how it grew back kind of grafted around. Anyway, I'm not a big fan of airbags, but we are going to fix this one. All we have to do is remove the negative cable. That's gonna be the black cable. It's a 10 millimeter wrench, a couple of turns, and it'll be loose enough to undo the cable from the terminal. Now I feel much safer working on the electronics in this car, especially when they're related to the airbag. Now the first thing I'm going to attempt to do is take off this main lower shroud. And that's held on by one Phillips head screw. Not held on by one. I see another one behind here in this crack. But that means we're going to have to take this out. And this ends up being a Torx head. If you don't know what a Torx head is, it's used more commonly on German cars. Let me show you. This is a Torx bit. It happens to be a T30. So that's the size you're gonna need to remove this, this upper piece. Is there one on both sides? Yes, there is. That should be fun to get to with that wiper stalk there. Go ahead and remove both sides. For this side, I flick the stock all the way down, and it's just enough for me to get this in there. A little stuck. Here's where things are starting to get weird. <laughs> so I was feeling around the edge of this bezel, and it turns out that there isn't actually any kind of seam. These don't come apart. And then I started to think, well, these caps weren't on when I got it, so somebody's been here. So then I thought, okay, well, what's next? Oh, okay. <laughs> So apparently the thing just comes half like that. That's interesting. So it looks like if I want to get to the screws that are behind there, which holds this whole shroud on, I need to unplug this. Oh man, can you see that hair? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna unplug the sensor and then that connector, and then we'll go from there. Both clips are super easy to unplug, and then you can remove the whole tiny bomb, because that's what these are. Now we can get rid of some of this hair too. <laughs> Disgusting. Now I know what those screws do that were on the side. Yeah, these ones, they come through and they actually connect to the back of the airbag. Uh, right on these little tabs there. So at least they're there for a reason, but I don't think I've ever seen an airbag held in that way before. This is a 19 millimeter socket and I recommend using a half inch drive. Unfortunately, I don't have an extension that's very short. I only have a long extension, so this should be great. Why do I see this not ending well? Oh. <laughs> that was much better than I thought was gonna happen. Now from what I've seen on other YouTube videos, you wanna make sure that you get the steering wheel actually loose before taking the nut all the way off. Otherwise you punch yourself in the face with the steering wheel. So, yep, 
It's it's on there pretty tight. Hmm. It's on there really tight. Really, really tight. Hey, we got it. Okay, so now we can take the nut all the way off. Quick go change -o. Let me show you those Phillips head screws you couldn't see before. Easy to see those two Phillips head screws now. Let's go ahead and take them out. Now that we got both the screws out, the plastic should just separate. So even though I had the steering wheel off, I was checking everything to see if there was any kind of broken wires or torn anything, and there wasn't. And the only thing I can think of is that it's not actually in the wires themselves, it's in the assembly that's behind the steering wheel. So this piece allows an electrical connection to turn uh, inside of the steering wheel so that, you know, as it moves around, it can still make contact. So there's a few of these little tabs all the way around. Uh, once you get it in the right order, the whole thing kind of comes off. So I'm guessing what went wrong is actually inside of this piece. So around this whole assembly is a series of clips. That one is still connected but I've gotten the other ones off. I just need to get that last one off and it should come apart, but it's a real pain in the butt. So this part might not be going back in. Uh, it turns out that there are clips on the inside as well. It might be a little difficult to see them, but there is a total of four clips on the inside. I broke just about every clip on the outside. So yeah, it's a good day so far. I feel a lot of it coming apart in my hand, so it should be pretty interesting to see what happens here. I finally see the problem. So as you can see, all of this is coiled in here so that it can turn left and right. These little wires, all the way at the end, they came undone from inside this little connector. Let's see if we can get that apart too. Yep. Let's get a let's get a HD look at this. See this little white piece right here? Well, that's the end of this. This is supposed to feed in here and connect like that, and it broke off. This looks to be, oh, okay, that came apart. So this is all one molded piece, and my soldering skills are not that good to put that back together. So I'm glad we took this all apart. Uh, it won't be going back together, but in case you were wondering what's controlling that airbag, this is it. What a weird design. So if I want the airbag to be functional again, which I'm not really crazy about, I would need to get another one of these assemblies. Uh, or I might be taking the bulb out of the dash. Find out on a future episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy. It should be noted that depending on what state you live in or where you live in on this earth, this may be completely illegal. So be sure to find out if in your state this is in fact legal to do. Otherwise, you gotta buy the part. You can't drive it until you get it. This ridiculously long extension. A lot of times whenever I asked about how tight I should make things, the answer was always, how much do you not want to die? So think about that when you put your lug nuts on next time. I forgot the screws that go in here. Damn it. <sighs> Take the steering wheel back off. At least we'll know how to do this real fast for the next project. Don't read into that. There is no other project that's gonna be like this. Okay, don't forget to put the screws in this time. We want to be safe anyway. For those of you wondering about the whole safety thing, I always wear my seatbelt. Always. All right, let's put it back together again. If any of you are wondering if this went how I expected it, not at all. Thought it would have been so much easier. <laughs> So we're just gonna find one of these wires stripped out or ripped out of its own little pin connector 
But no, we had to be difficult. One of these things is for the horn. The horn assembly is part of the airbag rotating assembly. That makes sense. This is certainly not turning out to be like a big cluster. I guess we should connect the car back up to the ground and find out if everything still works. One positive is I don't have to worry about the airbag going off my face or my arm. Ooh, sparky sparky. Okay, I'll connect it back up. Well, that still works. That's going to wrap up this episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy. I hope you found this somewhat entertaining because it certainly wasn't informative at all. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm sure there will be more episodes coming soon. See you there. I suppose if I just buy another one of these, I'll be all set. I never popped the hood.